This video is a technical explanation of my Seamonster top octave synth. Um, it's a top octave synth based almost exclusively on CMOS chips. Um, there's just a few op amps and uh, digital delay in it. Everything else is CMOS. Um, if you're looking for a sound demo, I'm going to be posting another video which will have better sound in it and I'll play a bunch of demos to demonstrate the sound. This is just technical explanation. Um, so I'm just going to start right off with the oscillators. Um, I have 12 Smith Trigger oscillators using uh, 4106 chips. Um, generate the top 12 notes and then those go into 12 individual 4040 dividers and that divides it up across the whole musical scale for the whole keyboard. I do that twice, once with a 16 foot, once with an 8 foot. So then I've got the, the two notes. I can, I've got buttons here to toggle them off and on. I can have both on, one or the other. Um, then that sounds sent through um, just simple um, resistor, capacitor, low pass and high pass filters. Um, before going to these filters, I also split the sound and send it through a Smith trigger. Um, when I send just one note through, um, it duplicates the same um, the same wave but inverted. If I send two notes or if I turn on both the, the 16 and 8 foot, then it creates weird pulse width modulation and rhythms. It sounds really cool. Um, that also goes through the same simple low pass and high pass filters to shape the wave. And then the levels on both of them um, are actively mixed. Um, since the Smith trigger one is inverted, I tried inverting it one more time so that they were both on the same inversion. They were basically mixing the same thing back in and it didn't sound as interesting. What I did was left it, the Smith trigger inverted, and then it gives more wave shaping op options because it cancels out the original wave when you mix them together. Um, next it goes into a simple LFO, another 4106 oscillator that um, triggers a 4066, just basically turns it off and on, and um, what it's turning off and on is a, uh, is a pot uh, with a capacitor to ground. Um, there's a button to turn the LFO off or on. Um, there's a, the pot going to the ground lets you control the amount. Um, so it's basically a low pass filter, but it's enough that it can turn the sound right off and on. Let me just crank it up a bit here. Hope that the phone picks that up. Or it can be turned down so it's just um, basically like a mild little tremolo and then just easily toggle it off or on. Um, I then send the sound into um, a 4040 divider and take a bunch of the top outputs of that and just mix them together. And it can create some pretty cool sounds, especially if I have both sets of um, oscillators on at the same time. Kind of reminds me a bit of uh, chip tune chords or something. Let me just see here. Especially when you get up to the higher notes. That's just holding one key. And some really interesting options as you start to add more notes and different keys. Um, hitting the same note. Um, I find creates a nice rhythm, sometimes hitting odd notes in between um, just creates noise, which can be desirable at times, especially if you're trying to do a drum beat or something. Um, then next, it goes in through a type of um, frequency modulation. Basically, I send a sound into a 4106 oscillator's uh, power supply. Um, take the output from the oscillator, control the rate, controls the, the modulation frequency, and then I have a pot to control the amount of the modulation. So just crank that all the way up here and pin down the key. Give you a quick demo of it. Okay. 
Again, I don't know how well the phone's picking this up. I did um, try a, uh, for frequency modulation, I did a uh, 4011 ring mod, and I found that it um, changed the waveform very similar to how this circuit does, but the problem with it is that the, um, the uh, carrier frequency always came through. When you weren't holding a note, you still heard the carrier frequency, whereas with this one, the carrier frequency doesn't exist until the sound provides the power, um, then the oscillator creates the carrier frequency. So it's kind of like self-gating the carrier frequency. Um, apparently it's not good for the chip to be powering it off sound sometimes, but I haven't had any troubles yet. And for the cost of a 4106, if something does happen, it's cheap to replace. Um, okay, after this, the sound goes After that, the sound goes into a uh, sequencer. I use a 4029 for my sequencer, decoded with a 4514. Um, it accepts an internal uh, clock. It also has an output for an external clock. Um, tempo is over here. You can see the, um, the rate. Oh, hold on a sec. There you go. So there goes the clock. Um, because I'm taking it, I have the option to take an um, external clock in. Um, I also have this divider. So the first dot here is the source clock. The second one is the divided clock. Um, even with the internal, it could be a nice option for um, quickly changing tempo, but staying staying within the tempo, but just dividing it down. But it's more, the thing I had in mind was when you're using an external clocking source that is going too quick for what you want to do. Um, because of the way the oscillators work, um, there's no pitch control. So instead it's just toggle on or off. You can hold down a note and it'll basically strum whatever notes you're holding down. Um, reset for uh, the 4th, 8th or 12th steps. So you can shorten it down from 16. Direction, so you can change the direction that it's traveling in. And uh, note length, so you can shorten it so that each one of these steps is their own individual um, gate, like own, own individual note. Or you can lengthen it so that if you have like four in a row, it'll sound as though you're holding down one very long note. And then underneath this, it's not a rocket launch, it is a reset button. See, it jumps back to the first step on the LED every time I press it. And I just cover it so I don't hit it by accident. And it looks cool. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention here, this is the preamp. Um, all the, the notes from the keys are actively mixed through um, an op amp. And this just provides you a bit of contro gain control on that mixing um, to make sure you... Uh, you trigger some of the CMOS circuitry in here. Um, it's good to have it turned up as high as you can, um, but if you're holding down several notes, it, it can cause a bit of distortion, so I put the control in so it can turn it down and control it a bit. Um, next, because um, of the top octave design, it's very hard to create a proper envelope. Um, what I've done instead is um, just added in a PT2399 digital delay chip and uh, I, I'm trying to just basically fake a release on it. So you can do like really crazy space echo stuff. But the main reason I put it in is to do just a slight release so it just kinda rings on for a second after you hold down the note and then what I do is I go into a wasp uh, wasp filter uh, for those of you who don't know wasp is a popular synthesizer from 1978 I think was when it was first released 
Um, the WASP filter uses a 4069 CMOS chip as part of, part of the filter. Um, you can find other demos of those online, so I'll just basically tell you what I've done different. I've put in two. Um, the one that I, the version that I use has a low pass, high pass, band pass, and notch pass. I also add an, op an option to bypass the whole filter. So the controls for all of them are over here. Um, then what I do is the, the both, both filters have their own output control. And on the input of the second filter, I have a pot that allows you to select either the input coming from the output of the first filter or from before the first filter. So they can run in serial or parallel and then you can mix them, act, they're actively mixed to any um, levels that you want. So it allows you to say put a low pass on one, high pass on the other and it sounds almost as though you have dual oscillators because all of a sudden you have two different sounds being mixed together. Um, one other thing I added into this was I used a 4066 um, as a decay circuit. Those can be turned on and off for each of them here. And um, all, it, all it does is it uses the input sound to trigger uh, the 4066, which opens up um, a capacitor uh, to ground, well, a resistor and capacitor to ground on the control voltage which basically drains slowly drains the control voltage uh, and there's a pot that controls the um, the sorry this pot here is the one that that goes to ground and it'll control the length of the, of the decay and one other thing I did that wasn't in the schematic I don't know if it's originally in the wasp filter or not is I added a pot to control the amount of distortion and yeah I think that's it covered just about everything there one other thing um, volume control right here at the end also since I reuse this um, equalizer panel I use a I think it's a 3904 uh, LED driver one is for the um, after the preamp the other one is the output volume just to monitor the levels going out just because I was there not because I really needed it and that's it uh, top octave CMOS space polyphonic synthesizer